Bernstein is advising uh, the Speaker that that is not an answer to the question asked. Uh, uh, would you? Oh, it was. Uh, could you repeat the question? Absolutely. Thank you very much. The Canada Statistics Advisory Council says that the Liberal government doesn't have the data required to make decisions on this pandemic. This is the type of data needed to support public policy decisions that they are making right now. Canadians can't trust government decisions when that government doesn't have or won't show what they know or, worse yet, what they don't know. This government has gone from saying they have Canadians' backs to hiding information behind their backs. When will this government provide Canadians with data and share what their recovery plan really is? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Madam Speaker, from the beginning of this pandemic, the Government of Canada has relied upon the opinions of experts to guide all of our decisions, whether it's in relation to procurement of vaccines, whether it's in relation to rebuilding our biomanufacturing capacity, whether it's in relation to the, uh, the, uh, the manufacturing of PPE. At every point of the way, we've been relying upon Canada's experts and making sure that the data upon which our decisions are made is solid. The Government of Canada shares as much data as possible, and we know that this is important because open science is important, and our government is going to continue to work, work with our experts and rely upon their opinions as we make our decisions. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, I mean, there, there seems to be a confusion between... Well, I mean, they... Well, I mean, they... Well, I mean, they... The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Greedo, Thousand Islands, Rideau Lakes. Across the border and minutes away from my community, U.S. seniors are able to be vaccinated at their convenience. On our side of the border, we're locked down, uncertain about our health, unable to see our families, and many are uncertain about their livelihoods. Lockdowns were supposed to be a temporary measure to buy government's time, but this government has failed to widely deploy rapid tests and vaccines. Our allies are getting vaccines for their most vulnerable, saving lives and allowing lockdowns to end. When will these Liberals do the same? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And, and I just want to correct the member and just give a few facts and figures here. 1.19 million vaccines have been sent to provinces and territories. The member speaks about rapid tests. Almost 19 million rapid tests have been sent to provinces and territories. 6.4 million to Ontario, 3.2 million to Quebec, 1.9 million to Alberta. Madam Speaker, we have delivered rapid tests and we are delivering vaccines. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable, uh, the Honourable, sorry, the Honourable Member for uh, Kildonan St. Paul. Manitoba is ramping up its plans to vaccinate 20,000 people per day by April. 13 vaccine super sites are opening up, as well as doctor's offices and local pharmacies, and all elderly and care homes have received their first dose. Provinces like Manitoba are doing their part to ensure vaccines are delivered to the people. But the province's efforts have been thwarted in part because the Prime Minister can't provide a reliable vaccine shipment schedule. The shipments aren't reliable thanks to poor vaccine contracts negotiated by this Liberal government. Madam Speaker, when are Manitobans getting our next vaccine shipment? and how many doses will we receive, we deserve to know. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, of course we communicate with provinces like the Members Province of Manitoba on a regular basis. We continue to receive vaccine shipments uh, and people in Manitoba would be receiving them as well. Uh, that includes this week. We have doses coming by the end of March, 6 million in fact, that have already been approved and enough to vaccinate every Canadian by the end of September. And we're glad that Manitoba and other provinces are ramping up their ability to vaccinate citizens because as more and more vaccine doses arrive, we will want those deployed as soon as possible. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Madam Speaker, all Canadians should welcome the government's addition of 13 new groups to the Criminal Code terrorist list. But the Liberals once again have failed Canadians, failing to fully ban Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. The IRGC has sponsored terror around the world for decades and is responsible for the destruction of the Ukraine air flight last year that killed 55 Canadians and 30 permanent residents. 
Madam Speaker, when will the Liberal government finally list the most deadly terror organization in the world today? Honourable Minister. I'd like to thank the member opposite for the question and, and remind him that we are, are working with respect to that particular regime with all like-minded countries to ensure that Iran is held to account for their support of terrorism. I'd also remind him that the Canadian government has listed four of the proxy agencies of the IRCG, um, including the Quds Force. Uh, we will continue to work with our allies to address the, the, ter the activities of the Iranian government and the sponsorship of terrorism, taking all appropriate measures against that regime, and we will continue to use all of the legal tools available to us based on the advice of our national security intelligence officials. Thank you, Madam. The Honourable Member for Saint Jean. Madam Speaker, permanent residents have found themselves in an inhumane situation because of the federal government's incompetence. The government gives families permanent residency and gives them a visa to come to Canada. These people leave their jobs, sell their homes, get on a plane, arrive in Canada, and then they're told by the border services, go back to your country. The Department of Immigration invites them, but once they're here, the Department of Public Safety wants to send them back. When will the two departments speak to each other and fix this unacceptable blundering? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. In order to stop spread of COVID-19 and protect Canadians, we have created measures at the border. We have also implemented exceptions to encourage our economic recovery and reunite families. Anyone who has received a confirmation of permanent res residency after the implementation of new measures at the border w will receive a letter confirming the situation. We will continue to protect all Canadians' health and safety. Thank you. The Honourable Member for St. Jean. Madam Speaker, they get a letter and a vis visa, but seemingly the left hand doesn't know what the right is doing in this government. You have a department inviting immigrants to come to Canada and another department which tries to get them to go away. In the same way that one department tells people to not travel and another one authorizing discount flights abroad. No one is talking to each other in this government. How come this government is so permissive with people who are uh, violating its guidelines in order to travel abroad and so punitive with people who are following its own guidelines and arrive in Canada on invitation? The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. We have been very clear. For Canadian safety and the safety of those arriving in Canada, this is not the time to travel. Border services agents can refuse entry to anyone who arrives at a port of entry and who doesn't satisfy the requirements. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lévis Le Bignard. Madam Speaker, Canada gave money to an international organization to distribute vaccines to, uh, to developing countries. And now we're asking that same organization to give us vaccines from the same fund to compensate for this prime minister's failure. Madam Speaker, it's embarrassing, even shameful for us as proud Canadians. And that is why we want to cast light on the situation. When will this government make the vaccine procurement contracts public? The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. If I may just correct the record that the COVAX facility was actually designed to have the buy-in of wealthy countries. It has two tracks, one for self financing countries to purchase vaccines through COVAX as well as to make donations. In fact, Canada, Canada has done both. We've contributed $220 million to provide vaccines for the developing world while also purchasing on behalf of Canadians. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary Confederation. Madam Speaker, the new American administration has stopped the Keystone XL pipeline dead in its tracks, killing thousands of jobs in Alberta. Now Michigan is attempting to shut down Enbridge Line 5, killing thousands of jobs in Ontario. This Liberal government has responded by rolling over and playing dead. All this while energy workers watch foreign oil come into Canada from third world dictators and human rights abusers. What specific action will this Liberal government take to reduce foreign oil imports into Canada this year? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. We take this issue with respect to Line 5 very seriously. Line 5 is vital to our energy security. This line is critical uh, economic energy security link between Canada and the U.S. It has safely operated for over 65 years. It provides good-paying middle-class jobs for the thousands of workers at refineries in Sarnia, Montreal, and Lévis, Quebec. I assure this House we are looking at all our options. Line 5 is a vital pipeline to Canada.